Hey YouTube, Gon Boondocking here again. Come to show you a new thing that I've come up with. Uh, sorry it's been so long since my last video. I've had several things going on. One of which is uh, this is about the fifth generation uh, of this that I've uh, that I've uh, that I've had to design to get it exactly the way I wanted. Uh, I also had you know there was a tragedy in the family, things like that. Uh, could not be avoided and uh, anyways I'm back and back to this this is our shower 2.0 what this is is a heated hour shower now I've already taken the uh, screws out of the side to be able to lift this up and show you what this is okay yeah you'll probably recognize the uh, the pump the filter and, and things like that you know, out of the original hour shower. What this does is it adds a, a heat exchanger and a second pump for to circulate uh, the uh, uh, heated medium through the heat exchanger in order to keep the hour shower at a very precise temperature. What this is here is a thermostatic mixing valve. This is also called an anti-scald valve. And what that will do is uh, just as the name implies, it will prevent uh, the uh, being scalded or hurt by hot water. In fact, this is uh, this is uh, so accurate. It's within two tenths of a degree Fahrenheit when you set it. So basically, this is pardon the pun, set it and forget it. Once you set the uh, the temperature the way you like it, you, know, you you can just leave it at that point and never have to to bother uh, even turning that valve. Turn it uh, counterclockwise for warmer, clockwise for uh, cooler, until you get exactly the uh, temperature that you like. So let me uh, explain a little bit about how this works then. Uh, I've, uh, uh, because of, I've, I've had some uh, feedback uh, about the sump online, uh, Amazon no longer has them available. Well, I found a much better sump. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, much cheaper. There is no uh, work to be involved. And what I've done, okay, is basically I put the filter medium around the bottom of, of a sprinkler head. This is an eight gallon per minute sprinkler head. So the three gallon per minute pump will have no problem. Uh, um, um, you know, you, on the suction side of the, uh, of the uh, pump, being able to to pick up the water out of the uh, out of the uh, um, shower drain or the shower basin. Uh, so, anyways, I put that filter medium on there. I put a hose clamp on it. I was able to just use a razor blade, cut off the excess filter medium. So now the filter medium is only on the very end of of the uh, of the uh, the the sump, as opposed to before. It was a big sock that could get dirty and and hard to maintain and clean. So this is, I believe, is a much better improvement. Okay, also, you can, uh, you don't have to put this any longer in your um, shower basin. You can put this on the wall above the shower, you can put it beside the shower to where this box never gets wet. You know, of course, if it does, it is not gonna hurt anything, you know, at all. Uh, the the water level is only going to be a very little bit of level at the very bottom. This is the bottom and this is the top. And so the water level will never uh, go over this anyways. Okay, and so uh, there's no water that's going to be able to get to the pump because it's completely enclosed on the, the top five sides. So how, it, how this works is the water gets, uh, uh, you know, the shower water gets sucked up through the uh, sump. It goes up to this pump, okay, it goes through the pump, and then it goes to the filter. Now, you've seen all this before. Now, out of the filter, it, this is a little different. Cold water then goes uh, to the uh, cold water side of the heat exchanger, and the heat exchanger then turns that water into hot water, okay, and then it returns over to the thermostatic mixing valve. Also, the cold water goes to this side of the thermostatic mixing valve. And what this does then is this mixes the hot water and the cold water together to give you a temperature. You may not be able to see it from here, but it's in the, the, uh, um, the third uh, port on this is down below. 
and it ha has an elbow that goes out to the top and this is where you attach your shower hose you know onto the uh, the threads on that, that's uh, sticking up through the top now on the the heated side of the heat exchanger okay which is this pump here okay the the uh, water comes the heated water source comes in from the outside goes through the the heated side of the heat exchanger and then it goes out of it goes through the pump okay and then returns again uh, uh, back out to the return line now the good thing about this is you can use any type of a of a liquid heat source for this you can uh, you can use your uh, if you have a van you can uh, put a T in your two heater hoses you know at your engine and bring the bring that heat that heated uh, antifreeze source right into these two okay and this pump will then circulate you know that water uh, so you basically when you come back from town or something like that and your engine is already hot uh, the radiators hot the fluid in in your coolant system is it, it is at temperature and so there's plenty of thermal mass inside of your uh, engine to be able to give you a very very long shower before it could ever cool down and again this will maintain it no matter what the the temperature is at the heat source even as it's cooling down this will still maintain you know the correct uh, temperature for the shower now you can also use if you have an RV you can you, you can put two T's into the hot and cold side of your hot water heater and the pump will then circulate that hot water from your hot water heater through through this system into the heat exchanger and then heat your shower water at, at, at a precise temperature. You can also uh, you could e even take a black hose fill it with water coil it up on the ground out in the sun and use that solar heated water as a heat source for your hour shower. You can put a, uh, a small solar water uh, panel on the roof of your RV and use it for a heated source for your, for, your, for your hour shower. And what that means is whether it's winter or summer, especially in the winter, this is gonna make for a very, very comfortable shower. This is, uh, is gonna be, is, is the, this particular heat exchanger has is a 40 plate heat exchanger which means that there is uh, there is a lot of uh, capability to transfer a maximum amount of heat from your heated from your heated uh, uh, liquid source to the hour shower okay so this is basically how this operates you you plug into a, a 12 volt DC you know, source right here then you can turn your your hour shower off and on with a switch right there okay and you can basically just hang this on the wall and in, in in the in your bathroom uh, you can also take this because it's got a I've you know it has a handle you can also uh, take this outside put it into a shower enclosure okay Put a half a gallon of water in the bottom of that shower enclosure, just like the hour shower, and this will circulate hot water now. Okay, all you need to do is add a heat source. Now, if you want to just continue using this as a regular hour shower, all you have to do is simply not use a, a water source here. It will not damage the pump for them to, to run dry. Okay, these pumps are, you know, are top of the line. There's a four-year warranty for these pumps. And these are the only moving parts, save for, say for this valve. Okay, it's the only moving parts in the entire system, which means this thing could, uh, you could expect this, uh, this to last uh, many, many, many years. And so this is an inv another investment, no, no different than investing in your solar system or in your water system, you know, for, for, cult, for pure drinking water, for power, things like this. This is gonna be an investment that you can uh, you 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 pay for it once and you never have to uh, purchase it again. All right. So I'm going to go from that here now and I'll show you a demonstration of how this works both uh, in our in our shower itself, but also I can give you a demonstration of how it would work 
in an outside shower. Okay, uh, I'll see you in a few. Okay, bye. Okay, campers, this is what this looks like outside. Uh, as you can see, maybe here, this this is uh, the shower's turned on. Okay, and uh, how I've got this uh, hooked up here is the uh, uh, your cold and the hot water coming, uh, the hot and the return actually coming from my heat source, and my heat source is the hot water heater. You see, I just what I did, I just put brought two lines over from my hot water heater where I teed into the hot water heater and then I have of course a uh, power line uh, DC line going to a plug down underneath where I have everything going inside okay and I put my existing shower nozzle okay on the top okay and just got it going into a bucket just simulating the shower um, but uh, as you can see, there's plenty of water pressure here. Uh, this is even on on um, a massage on the on the shower head. So there's quite a bit of pressure here, and, uh, and so there's no lack of that at all. And now in a minute here, I'm going to shut this off and go get my uh, infrared thermostat. And I'm going to show you the uh, temperature of the water. I've got this set just about right right now for a uh, for the shower water, but this will go uh, quite a bit hotter than that and quite a bit cooler than that. So I'll be right back and I'll show you the temperatures. Okay, bye. Okay, here we are. I have my infrared uh, thermometer here. And you see, I've got this uh, right about 105 degrees right now coming out of the uh, shower nozzle. Okay, the water temperature is, of course, less than that. Okay, and now I can turn it, I'll turn this up warmer just to let you see how much warmer it can go. Mm -hmm. There's 122, 118. Okay, and by the way, 120 degrees is considered scalding, and so this is turned all the way up, and it's still quite safe. Okay, it's under the scald under scalding temperature, even when it's turned all the way up. Okay, it turned up. Yeah, you know, see how high it go. It went, well, it wasn't all the way up actually. Let's try it now. Okay, I'm showing 119.1 degrees. 119.3, 4, 6. So you can see there, it's uh, right about 120 degrees is just about where it'll hold at its highest temperature, which is really good and quite safe. Okay, I'll turn this back down again. Okay, and then this will cool down. The water temperature, of course, has got to cool down a little bit, and then uh, it'll be back uh, normal again. But that's it. Uh, this is a heated hour shower. Hour shower 2.0. And the only difference is I use a, a heat exchanger and another pump to be able to pump any type of a heat source, a liquid heat source, into the heat exchanger. And it heats up the hour shower temperature to whatever you want to set it to on the thermostatic mixing valve. Okay, and uh, I'll also give you a... a a shot of it uh, uh, operating on the inside as well. Okay, more later. Bye. Okay, here is us. Whoa, that's steamy in here. Wow. I need to turn the temperature down in the shower. Anyways, this is what it looks like inside. Now, normally I have a up against the wall and up on that little lip down there but I'm going to be doing an outside uh, demonstration also and so I just w didn't want to put everything you know, against the wall and have to take it right back down again but uh, there we go and there's the outside shower at work 
Wow, that's really hot water. Huh. It's not too hot. I'm still able to get my hands in there, but as you can see, yeah, this here is uh, on massage mode. Okay. And then regular mode. And there's how much water I have in the bottom of it. As you can see, the water doesn't even fill up the entire bottom of the uh, the shower basin. And I'm now getting it on the floor out here. So, anyways, just wanted you guys to see that. Okay. I'm going to show you uh, what it looks like outside with the uh, with the uh, little miniature shower I made for the uh, van build. Okay. Okay. This is kind of what I've done for the outside. I'm going to be doing a demo at the uh, van build as well. And I made this kind of a miniaturized shower because I didn't want anybody to get the idea of being able to just come on over, or strip down and jump into my hour shower demonstration model. So I made it smaller so no one could use it for that. But um, as you can see, I've uh, there's my hot and cold water coming from my hot water, my propane hot water heater. Okay, and then I've got a uh, 12 volt DC line going, you know, to, to the uh, hour shower 2.0 box, and that powers the two pumps. Okay, and as you can see, there's the water coming out up here, going into the uh, down inside of the shower. Okay, and right here is where we set our temperature. Okay, right here. Okay, so. But I just thought I'd just put it inside of this. This gets you give you an idea of how this would work. Now there's exactly one half of a gallon of water in this. It was exactly one half of a gallon of water uh, on the inside shower, where you can see you know, the water didn't even cover the entire shower basin. I just wanted to be able to give you an idea of what this would look like for a van dweller. Uh, and now just imagine that this would be a full-size shower enclosure and you could put this on the inside Okay with the inside the shower enclosure or you could set it outside on the ground and simply run the the sump Okay, and the uh, the the shower Head and run it inside of the uh, shower enclosure and leave the rest of it outside on the ground uh, You alternatively you could also build this into your van and already have it plumbed into your uh, to a, a heat source and the only thing that would be outside would be a, a line uh, the the sump hose going to the bottom of your uh, of your shower and of course the uh, shower head everything else could be built inside of a van inside of an RV and uh, and have a permanent hot hour shower that would that can operate on a half a gallon of water okay now I've been using this same filter in this one for about three months now and it still is not uh, clogged up one bit okay it's still operating exactly the way it did when I first installed it so there's been no problem whatsoever about that you just got to remember to put a, uh, a half a or a teaspoon excuse me of uh, Epsom salt in the water, you know, for each shower. Okay, that will separate the uh, the soaps from the water, and it will do so chemically. It's a chemical process called an ionic bond between the salts in the soap and the magnesium in the magnesium sulfate, actually, in, in the Epsom salt. So, uh, and that's the way that the filter then is able to. To uh, grab a hold of the soaps and hang on to it so what comes back out the top is very clean soap free water okay now if you find that this, the water still feels uh, a little soapy you're probably using the wrong soap because this really does need to operate on biodegradable soap for a couple of reasons one is it, you know the method in which you uh, Dispose of the water when you're finished and and secondly uh, some soaps uh, uh, have petroleum in pro petroleum products in them 
that uh, will uh, clog up the filter and the filter does not, um, it, 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 without other chemicals, cannot filter out the oils and that's what makes the soap, uh, for some people, uh, still feel a little slick and still feel a little soapy is because they're not really using soap, they're using petroleum to shower with. And so definitely uh, recommend going on to the, uh, uh, to the hour shower video and getting the soap that is recommended on the hour shower video. So, um, okay, there's, there's that part of it. By the way, you know, I apologize again for being so long uh, uh, in getting the, uh, this video to you. Uh, to do understand that, uh, you know, that uh, there's been several things going on as well as just the, uh, this is like the fifth version of, of trying to get this exactly uh, uh, correct to where there's no moving parts and, and it's trouble-free operation for, you know, basically the, the life of the, uh, uh, of your, uh, of your camping experience, I would suppose, for as long as you wanted it. Uh, the only moving parts are, of course, the uh, water pumps, and they have a four-year warranty. But often, you'll notice, uh, and especially in a very old RV, it's still got the original water pump in it. So, so that's uh, usually pumps last a quite a long time. So, on that note, uh, also because I'm so far behind, I'm thinking about go ahead and doing a live uh, video uh, for everybody. Um, how about we try to do that next Friday, uh, which would be, what, the uh, 15th, I believe. And uh, that way I can answer questions and stuff because we're just so far backed up from that. And uh, again, I apologize for, for not being able to get back to people, but uh, you know, it's been, it's been uh, one, of those, uh, one of those months. Yeah, probably other people have had them too. So. Um, Okay, uh, tell me in the comments what you think about uh, just go ahead and doing a live program so I can answer a lot of questions and things like that. And I'll try to be as brief as possible, but there's no telling how long that would go on. But, but uh, okay, uh, you guys, I appreciate very much uh, you watching this video. And I hope that this is exactly what you need to make this lifestyle permanent and enjoyable and comfortable. And with that, happy camping. Goodbye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and found it helpful. I want to thank you for watching every one of my videos. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I'll do my very best to answer them as quickly as possible. There's always room for one more out here. I'll see you then. I'm gone, boondocking.